the job is to make the difficult look easy and the easy look beautiful. Ultimately, that's the best moment because it's like you're using this torch, it's almost like a magician's wand. It's great and people are responding. It's all about being lovable. Charm. They don't like you, they don't pay you. And the crowd that's in front of me is very important. If they're, if they're a good crowd, they're very important to me. For a bad crowd, I let them know and I tell them to go away. That was the longest show of my entire life right there. Well, because uh, there was tumbleweeds that we had to move out of the way first. At the end of the day, I'm at this picnic table and I had all this change and I'm making piles of four quarters. I counted it all up and I had made 80 bucks. And I was like, I'll never work again! Someone told me right in the beginning, um, and I learned it later on, that it's not what you do, it's how you do it. If you can afford to put food on your plate and have a place to live and sleep and you uh, are making an income full time off of this, you're successful. After that, it's all gravy. There you go, Jeff. Here, so, uh, here oh, thanks. Yeah. 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 for a year in Australia and then I started traveling overseas and I haven't haven't had a winter since. I know what you're all thinking. The answer is yes. <laughs> when I first started doing street performing I was just doing a juggling show fire and knives and balls and whatever. But then I got to a point where I was like, well, what other skills have I got that I can try and use on the street? And I, you know, I started doing contortionism and people really liked it. So I dropped all the rest of the stuff and just made it all contortion. I started looking in circus books and like going to the library and finding out what contortionists used to do like in old circuses in Russia and stuff. Just trying to figure out if I could do any of that stuff. This is how I work out. Check this out. Push ups. Here's my girlfriend's favorite warm up trick. <laughs> I like you people. You're my kind of audience. Yeah. Well, as soon as a few people start clapping, everyone starts clapping. As soon as you know, as soon as you get 100 people watching, then pretty quickly you'll have three or 400 people watching because people are like sheep. something going on over there they want to oh, what's going on I want to I want to be with those people watching that thing because that's that's cool look there's a big crowd it doesn't even matter what you're doing if you've got a big crowd you can be a bigger crowd Folks better clap after this, man. <laughs> no more golfers clap. I'm talking about real applause, all right? Oh. <laughs> this could be dangerous. I should move the parts of my body that are most in danger out of the way first. Stay. <laughs> That's my favorite joke in the whole show. <laughs> it's all about charisma and showmanship. People have got to identify with you and you know like you. If they don't like you, then, you know you just got to make friends with everyone. And the easiest way to make friends is is just by making jokes. Everyone likes a funny guy.
I just clap everyone. Yeah. You know, I don't care. Like, I'll, I'll, you know, if there's a bunch of guys, I'll play up to them. Or the kids, I don't care. You know, just, I just have to adapt to every show. You know, if there's someone that's always laughing, it doesn't matter who it is, I'll play up to them. You just kind of kind of identify who's your, who are your good audience members and play it up for them. All right, I'll give you what you want, folks. Bit of danger. Risking my life. Twelve feet high, five balls, big blade, and three of these. I do what I like every day. If you do what you love, why not get paid for it? Well, there's nothing better to do, really. You know, you should, everyone should be doing what they like, but there's probably only like 2% of the population that do. And if I don't make enough to get back to Australia, I'll stay here and I'll marry one of your daughters. <laughs> or sons. You have to be confident with your finale, because if you screw up your finale, then everything you've been talking about you know, suddenly is not valid. Your finale has to be 100% spot on every time. There's no mistakes. All right, people, one last time. A little bit of energy. I've given you all of mine. Now I give you my best. Give me your best as well, folks. Come on. Sales pitch. It's not asking for money. It's selling your show. If you got to, if you sell it right, then people will give you money. Evo, I choose to be a street performer because I think it's an honest way to make a living. You get paid what you're worth only by the people that watch. There's no other job like this in the world. I do what I was born to do. Thanks very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been a great crowd. Thanks a lot, Kingston. It's great. Sometimes they're weirdos. Yeah, they're just, like they just want to like talk to you for five minutes and then leave, you know, sometimes I want you to come over to their house and have dinner, which is all right, it depends on who they are, but and, um, sometimes, uh, sometimes you get pretty ones, it's fun. Yeah. If you tell someone a joke and they laugh, you feel good, right? If you tell 400 people a joke and they all laugh, it's pretty cool, it's a buzz, you know? Like, it's like a drug. I'm addicted to street performing. Okay, people, that was pathetic. Let me explain. See, this is live interactive street theater, so it's your job to take part. Wherever I go in the world, when I explain I'm going to light a torch which could potentially burn my face off, the general response from the audience when I light that torch is to do something that sounds like this. Shall we all try that? Oh man, that was good. <laughs> there are three parts to every street show. There's what we call the build or the crowd gather, there's the show and there's the hat. The crowd gather is the time spent gathering that initial audience so that you can do your show. There's no point doing your show if you don't have enough people there to make it worthwhile. Just one. Don't take them all. You're like my ex-wife. You want everything. Okay. <laughs> what I want you to do. This is a business. We have to make money at the end of the show. That's how I make my income. So to perform for four people is not going to make a profit for me. So I have to spend time bringing people in. But you know what, April? Because you gave me that confidence, April, that's what I'm going to do. I'll take the deck of cards, shove it in my mouth, suck it in hard, suck your card into my mouth, fold it with my tongue, not once, not twice, but three times, just for you, April, because, April, you're cute. <laughs> Here we go, April, you ready? Watch closely, just for you. A little warm-up first off, April. Always warm up before you do anything dangerous. Perhaps you can help with it. Never mind. Here we go, April, you ready? Hi, April, how are you? Fast one. Oh, good God. Woo! Want some paper, cut. One card in my mouth, like.
ladies and gentlemen. One card in my mouth, April. What was your card? One card in my mouth, ladies and gentlemen. I said three times, April, watch closely. Folded once, twice, three times, ladies and gentlemen. Slight of tongue, ladies and gentlemen, slight of tongue. Like I told her last night, watch closely, this doesn't last long. Some things you just shouldn't say out loud. <laughs> Anybody in the variety arts in Canada, if you can afford to put food on your plate and have a place to live and sleep and you uh, are making an income full time off of this, you're successful. After that, it's all gravy. There you go, Jeff. You're, so, uh, you're oh, thanks. Yeah. 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 There we go. One arm in that side, just like that. Under the microphone, under. Push it, push it, push it. <laughs> I love my job. Ooh, you smell good. <laughs> there we go, Robin. Get in there, buddy. Start on that top buckle. One at a time, do them up. Hey, Robin. Yeah. Robin, I don't know you very well. No. I'm turning this way, dude. <laughs> no, don't be following me now. It's better than any drug in the world. Uh, when you get an audience that's working with you and playing with you, and, and that's really what it is. We play. We play with an audience. And when they're willing to play with you, it is the most wonderful thing. Carla, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to walk up behind me. You will gently reach down there and grab that strap. You will gently do it up gently. Carla, do we have an understanding? Okay, Carla, on the backswing, come and get it. On the backswing, just reach in anytime now. Just reach in, grab a hold, just reach, oh! And it, it just makes it a lot more fun as a performer to have that it's a whole new prop is the audience. Uh, it gives me a whole new thing to play with and it's something that changes constantly because every audience is different and that's what makes it uh, possible for me to keep up for every show because I'm not doing the same exact show every time and that keeps me interested. Frankly, this is a job that I can't recommend to anybody. It's incredibly weird hours and, and lifestyle. You're never home, you're always on the road. It's very difficult to make a living and it's finicky depending on the weather and everything else. There's so many variables that to be successful in this business, you have to absolutely love it. Thank you. I was a hairstylist for about <laughs> 10 years and was really tired of that profession. And I grew up on a farm in pretty much Outback Australia, or I spent some time in Outback Australia working on farms, and so we've got no real qualifications whatsoever. <laughs> I've never really um, had any formal training in uh, martial arts or performance or dance. We've pretty much taught ourselves most of what we know, particularly the more advanced stuff. Um, and we've, you know, we've picked up bits and pieces, we've shared tricks with, with friends here and there along the way. And... So performing sort of became a way of life for us and uh, for f a good four years we relied solely on, um, on street performing, on busking and it's just the last three or four years that we've uh, had interest from festivals.
We taught ourselves within that, within that year that we were in India. Uh, we were very intensively working out and practicing and just getting right into it. And uh, over the years, just sort of honed that and uh, and and worked with the music, uh, just putting it to music and putting the music to it. Getting back to that trance state, if you can get yourself into into that trance, then um, everything's okay. And we've learnt to um, to just let go, let it happen, and have fun with it. And that's uh, that's the best way. But uh, yeah, we can show you our scars if you like. <laughs> <laughs> show always comes back to us if we're really getting into what we're doing then the crowd really gets into it as well you know and uh, so it's always a challenge for us to keep it fresh and to really focus on on what we're doing and and uh, put on the best possible performance we can There's always the sceptics and uh, I'm just glad that we didn't listen to them <laughs> <laughs> and that we're doing what we want to do, you know, and, uh, that's, which gets back to just taking that leap of faith, you know, you never know where things are going to wind up and what's going to happen, but as long, I think if you've got a path with a heart, if you follow your heart, then it'll always lead you in the direction that serves you best. Yeah, we had no idea five years ago what we'd be doing today and who knows where this will lead. We didn't realise it would lead here. So we'll just keep, uh, keep, keep on keeping on keep having and, fun and uh, keep having fun with it until we, fun. yeah, I mean, if we get to the point where it's, uh, it's not fun anymore, <laughs> then uh, we'll think of something else to do. <laughs> Uh, I'm here with my friend. Good, you got friends, dude. <laughs> Wish I had friends when I was your age. Look what I do for a living, you stay in school, you understand? Yeah. That's all I own in my life, I got nothing else. You stay in school and you get good grades, okay? Yeah. And when you go to school and get good grades, then you got a chance to become somebody important, like a doctor, a lawyer, or a Japanese, right? <laughs> There's a space helmet for you. <laughs> It's like selling a product. You're selling yourself to the crowd. The crowd have to initially like you right off the bat. Watch this trick now, Judy! Judy! Where are you from? Buffalo, sorry? Buffalo, New York. I heard I said sorry! <laughs> Judy, is that with an I or a Y? Why? Because names are very important in the morning. <laughs> to me, it's about me and the crowd. You know, that's all I care about, me and the crowd in front of me. And the crowd that's in front of me is very important. If they're, if they're a good crowd, they're very important to me. For a bad crowd, I let them know and I tell them to go away. Judy! Watch! Timing is very important in a street show. Location, a good street entertainer 
can determine whether he's going to pull off a good show or a bad show by, by looking at the, the crowd, the way they're walking, the pace they're walking. I know it's on the stick, shut up. <laughs> shut up. If I was any good, I wouldn't be here, you understand? This is a magic show with a bit of comedy in it. I wanted to be able to work all the time. And in England, when I was a kid, they wouldn't let you work. Busking was illegal, they considered it illegal. It's checked, the laws have changed and they've uh, tolerated it a lot more these days. So I wanted to come somewhere where I could perform all day and all night. You know, I love performing. And then Halifax started, the big busker festival. I went there, I made a colossal amount of money, and I, I just found that the Canadians are the greatest people in the world to perform for. Look at you go, Granny! I couldn't believe it, it was so quick! Are you patronizing me? No. Hope you don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I do believe they've spoiled the idea of a street performer by these sound systems and these big festivals. Hopefully, there'll be a, an organizer that uh, produce a festival where it's just no amps, no stages, just, you know, because I'll, be I'll be the king of it, I'll be the best. Hey, see it, tap it, Eric, this one's back, Eric. Eric, you've been watching me like a customs man. How many here, Eric? Eric, how many here? Try again, Eric. How many, Eric? Three. Uh. <laughs> Eric, three going in at the same time. How many here, Eric? Orange. <laughs> What's this? What's this? This is my last show of the festival. I must leave. Watch, Eric. How many balls under the hat? None. How many now? Three. Uh. Well, you shouldn't be watching here anyway, audience. Look. the show you pay, why should we both be disappointed? Some of you say, well, magic man from England, I have no change, all I got is a 20. I'll change it, don't be embarrassed to ask to change. Do you need change for your nickel? I stand out is because I'm only 13, and that's really the only reason why. Welcome to Kingston Buskers Rendezvous! God bless the United Canada! Rendezvous! We've met a whole bunch of different buskers, and all of them have, um, really different personalities. They're all really nice people, but some of them are different than the others we met. I saw you doing Ottawa at the I just love to go around meeting different street performers. I was eight years old when I got interested in juggling. I was just kind of bored one summer day, and I took a couple golf balls and started to learn how to juggle. And then, well, we went to Halifax, and I saw a busker there. So then I picked up a couple tricks from him. So I just kept practicing that. All right, here we go. Unicycle, one wheel. All right, everyone. Cody's awesome. This is a kid who has the best natural talent I've seen in a long time. His instincts are great. 
You can sense the instinct, his uh, gut reaction to how things happen on stage and how he reacts to them when they happen. This kid's going to go far. We've been all joking about it in the green room, saying that five years from now, this kid's going to be blowing us off the stage. All right, and this one's my favorite, the elevator. This is usually about the time people start clapping. Well, I started off with golf balls. That was the first thing I ever juggled, and they collide quite often, hitting me in the face. Or in the next was uh, the clubs. I you know, do like double spins in the air and they come and hit me in the eye and stuff. That really hurts. Oh, it's been such a great festival. Way better than last year for sure. I made so much money. <laughs> right when her show is that ending, I start the music. I'm only 13. It's exciting to see a young kid like this come along who has so much potential and, and most of the performers, myself included, have all been trying to do what we can to encourage that and to try and uh, make sure that he gets steered in the right direction to take best advantage of what he's, uh, what he's got as natural abilities. Okay, I have one more thing to do, but first I'm going to need some dancers. You two girls look good. I need one to stand right there. I want to go stand by my amp. And all you have to do is start dancing and keep the audience busy while I light my torches. Start dancing, girls. Yeah, they've got it. You have a lighter? Come on up. Okay. Yeah, shake the hips. Cool. That's like five years ago, though. <laughs> lit my shirt on fire all along here once. I was juggling out there and my parents were watching me and all of a sudden I dropped a flame and it hit right along my shirt and it was all on fire here. So I was lucky enough to just smack it out. Through this whole festival I've never got a 20 in my hat, okay? Nor a 10, many flies but never a 10 or 20, okay? And I really think I'm worth it, okay? So I'm gonna start juggling, you guys are gonna go absolutely wild. I'm gonna put on my hat and you're gonna put 20s in it, okay? Here we go. Very difficult trick. Fire. <laughs> yes, a bit louder! I'd say the most important thing I learned was the hat line. That's probably the most important thing you need to be a busker. A really good hat line. <laughs> oh! Thank you! Thank you! Oh, thank you, sir! Thank you! I got a 20, but I've never gotten a 50. I have no idea what I want to be when I grow up. This is, you know, something to fall back on easily. But this is probably something I'd like to do anytime I just want to. Just stay good at it and just anytime I want to do it, just go out and do it. Yep. That was an awesome show. Totally awesome. And look, look it, hang on. The 20. <laughs> it's like such a fun job too. Uh, in Toronto on the street in front of the Black Bull with all the motorcycles, kind of a rock and roll feeling there. And uh, Halifax dropped their card in my, uh, my hat. And then from there, uh, within two weeks, I was booked across Canada, right all the way to Singapore. So it was very cool. <laughs> audience just like the statue or you know so sometimes if you give them too much you know they're that's not what they're into they wanted to see me it be suspend their disbelief in being the machine you know it's almost like a mantra a physical mantra that I'm doing so it's a, it, my Elvis sort of has a Tai Chi feel to it when I do the rotation and people feel that intuitively so people are compelled drawn into it on an intuitive level. Sometimes they don't even know why they're standing there watching me, you know, it's just like, it's just kind of fascinating. You now people say, are you an Elvis impersonator? I said, no, I'm an Elvis simulator. <laughs> I was walking down the street the other day, a guy held me up with a banana. He said, give me your money. I said, it's a banana. He said, I'm saving up, give me your money. 
What can I do? I gave him the cash. I'm oh, sorry for the guy. So listen. I'll stick around and do it. If you'll stick around and watch it, what do you say? I feel so disenchanted. So somehow wet. I was seven years old, and I saw my first street performer in New York. And uh, he was in Central Park. He was doing something. But it seemed to me like he was doing about 13 balls. I think he was probably doing five. And uh, that guy was just so happy and doing his thing. And uh, my grandmother gave me a sandwich to put in his hat. So I had this uh, sandwich, and he came and I put the sandwich in the hat. And uh, he returned the smile. He gave me the same energy. And I went home from that, and I started juggling. This is for my mom. This is my impression of the second night of Hanukkah. Thank you and welcome to the Taxi Trick Show. I'm a third generation taxi cab driver. My father was a cab driver, his father before him was a cab driver, all three of us bachelors. I tried hardcore busking on the streets of uh, Massachusetts and then down in Key West and I died every time. I didn't do well. And then I tried it at a very small country fair uh, in Connecticut and I killed them. It's great. I hold up my hat at the end of the show and nobody, they all walk away. And one old lady like walks up real slow and gives me a quarter. <laughs> I look at it and I'm like, there's hope. Now I can do better. I'm just gonna tighten up the pitch. At the end of the day, I'm at this picnic table, and I had all this change, and I'm making piles of four quarters. I counted it all up, and I had made 80 bucks. And I was like, I'll never work again! But the relative intelligence of what I do compared to the risks that I take is one final reason why. At the end of the show, people love the opportunity to give me... A lot of money! A lot of money! You might want to bear that in mind a little later. Here we go, the torch! in the mouth. It is about the rapport. And it's also about loving them, being funny, being mysterious, being weird, whatever it is, but being interesting. About the physical so that they're captivated by what you're up to. My it doesn't really doesn't matter what your medium is, but it totally matters how you're being about it, how you're being with them. Are you having the experience so of watching it be fun? So I love the art form, and I completely love what I'm up to. Like I've been working for the last three or four months, an hour, an hour to two hours a day on five clubs. Right? I want to do that on the high unicycle for my finished trick. I'd be the only guy in the world doing it if I do it with the harmonica. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on my terms, yeah. Thank you. I got in the paper today, a big color picture, and I'm on the same page as the Pope. My picture, this big, the Pope's picture, that. I'm really a festival performer. I was raised in festivals. I always helped out at them, and I've always performed at them. When we uh, talk about the street, you're referring to pure street, which is when you go out without an event supporting you to do your show, and it's a lot harder. There's less people, there's no advertising, and you can get arrested, and people might think you're crazy and really strange, so I've only done a very little bit of that. Big show over here, big show over there. Catch the brakes, the brakes and the waves. You have the best seats in the house because when these shows finish at either side, there's gonna be about 600 people coming like this here. But there are big differences 
between some really big street acts and the, you know, the guy you see strumming a guitar in front of the liquor store. The big street performing thing that's different is gathering the crowd. You can't just do your best stuff or your good tricks right off the bat because nobody's there. So what you have to do is make noise, do some stuff that's visual, get people clapping for small tricks or things that aren't even tricks. I'm in the newspaper today, so you can go home, yeah, and you can say, I saw that guy, I'm on the same page as the Pope, which makes me something. Well, I've got a few great things for you guys. Something a little absurd and crazy to start, a little warm up, the crystal ball routine, beautiful circ quality, and of course, the dangerous fire staff for the finale. One key part of that structure is to reveal your finale early on or say I'm going to do this really early on and then you know spending a lot of time doing other things so no one will leave if they came to see that one trick uh, they will stay till you do that trick. Because I do uh, contact juggling where it stays on the body and I uh, use acrylic or crystal balls which look beautiful in the day and the night and it's, uh, it's just very artistic, it's not goofy. Usually everything's goofy and it looks really nice and people really get a bit hypnotized by it. What I like best about my show is I just try to be very sincere and uh, not fake and not always setting stuff up and leading people through it. All right, here we go with five crystal balls. Get ready to applaud because it won't last very long. I was told and I believe that you have to work on something for years, even decades. The best performers I've ever met have done the same thing for like 20 years. Everybody clap a nice rhythm. You got the green light. It's got more of the appearance of an incredibly huge, dangerous, scary, difficult thing. Whereas it's uh, probably the easiest thing I do in the whole show. But it's there to look big and to look scary. Here we go! Not bad, come on, you can do better than that, everybody, come on! Here we go! When you do things as a group, it sounds amazing, you know? To have 300 or 500 people say, ooh, it's neat. You don't see it every day. Our technologies are great and help connect us, but the human element where you're face to face and or you can touch a person is, is great. If I could keep doing this and just make a living and maybe support a family, I'd be more than happy. And page two of the sun, it's me and the Pope. It is. Most people just call me a sidewalk artist. I had no job about eight years ago. Didn't have anything, actually. So I uh, just started drawing on the sidewalk and got better and better, and now I'm doing festivals and corporate gigs, so basically I started with nothing. So it's a half decent living. Like I said, I'll never, uh, I'll never get rich, but it doesn't really matter, right? It's not about the money. If it was, I'd be working in the corporate world. Everybody else has a big pitch. They're on 15 minutes, they draw a crowd real fast, and it's huge. And I, my people just come by slowly but surely, and they come back to see how much I do. Uh, last night, I had people standing around me all around. It was really neat. It was like a circle of 60, 70 people at a time. As a kid, all I wanted to do was make a living as an artist. Finally, I started doing this, and regardless of the wealth, but it, well, no, I'm wealthy, just not rich. I make a living as an artist, like every single day. I have no boss. My boss is the millions of people that see me all year. It's really great. So I'm probably about the most successful man I know other than the other buskers, just because it's my world every morning I wake up.
That's okay. Well, we're going to start in a couple minutes. All we need is about 50,000 people to show up here, and then we're going to start. All right? That should take more than five minutes. How are you, sir? Excellent. Hard work? You're doing hard work or I'm doing hard work? We're really lucky because there's not a lot of spots where you can just show up and busk. So when the street performance festivals come, people really come out and support it. It's not like Europe where you can really show up on any street corner and work and people expect it. Each individual act negotiates their contract, um, whether it's uh, travel fee provided or accommodations provided. Most know. festivals will give you accommodations, definitely, but for the most part you're on your own in getting to the festival. The reason we are here is we are a part of the Busking Festival or the International Street Performers Festival. Believe it or not, we do this for a living. Yeah, I know. Nobody's laughing now. The way we make our money is we pass our hat at the end of the show. Uh, we've been doing a show for about uh, six hours now, it seems. That was the longest show of my entire life right there. Why was that? Well, because uh, there was tumbleweeds that we had to move out of the way first, and then uh, we basically just uh, tried to get some people to come down and hang out and do stuff. But uh, it was good fun, you know? <sighs> Glad it's over. Man, another festival down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what's going to happen. We're going to get the ball rolling. I'm going to introduce myself, my partner, tell you who we are, tell you what you're about to see. All we would ask is that people turn off their cell phones. What's the matter with you at this show? Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Hello? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing a show. I'm a little busy. I can't talk, but I do have a riddle for you. Okay, what has small balls and hangs down? No, a bat. Yes, now what has big balls and hangs up? You don't know? There you go. Thank you. You get those shows every once in a while where every single thing works. Like, you have so much material and you plan for so many things, and then a lot of times it relies on the audience and how they react and how they do certain things. So a lot of times you don't get to use your really good material. You and I are gonna have a duel, the winner gets the five bucks. Now these are the rules. It's my five bucks, right Mike? Goes into my pocket. Now since I don't trust you, I need to get something prepared. In my pocket here, I have a safety dueling hat. Now, because there's money involved, we want to make it fair, you need a safety dueling hat. It is a long, hard road. Like it took us four and a half years to get to the point where we had the opportunity to come and work the big international festivals. And those four and a half years, you know, you don't get the money rolling in and you, there's not a lot of work and you do maybe a few gigs a year and you just gotta be really persistent with it because like anything, there's a lot of competition and there's no real place you can go to get experience. You have to do it on your own. Pay attention, there's gonna be a quiz. You're watching, we do this, this, the sharp pieces go up your nose, like that. This goes here, we take this off, do this tape, this kind of goes here, we'll put this over here, do something like this, maybe do this, I don't know, put this around here, do this kind of thing and do this. Ugh. Now the best part is just knowing that you know everything worked. It has to be perfect for it to work the way we envisioned it. And once you make that happen, it's like painting a perfect picture. Now what we need are weapons. Check this out, this is for you, buddy. There you go. Hold on, time out. We're gonna do it fair because there's money involved. You're gonna turn and see this line, you stay on that line, you face that way. You don't move. I stand with my back to you like this. Now audience, we're gonna need your help. We're gonna need you to count, balloon fairy, slowly and clearly to five. One, two, three, four, and so on, all the way to five. And then once you get to the point where you can actually travel overseas and book European gigs or Asian gigs or Australian gigs, um, even the US to a certain extent, then you become like the international performer. And once you get to that point, um, as far as street performers go, that's pretty much where it's at. Like you want to be able to say, look, we've done this all around the world. Keep in mind, you must be loud and clear so George can hear you. If he can't hear you, he will be at a disadvantage. We want equal opportunity for the money. George, do you know what you're doing? Audience, do you know what you're doing? I'm Colin Smart. Thank you! Thank you!
Thank you so very much. Thank you, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing, you know? And I think everyone knows it's just a show. It's just an act. They don't think I'm a really bad guy, but they all play along. Fine, sorry, George, you're a loser today. See you later. No, 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 no. What? George, you stay here. Books, how many people think that Bill cheated? Who thinks that George deserves to win the money? You're gonna give him my five dollars. I can't believe that. All right, George, I'll tell you what, buddy, come here. You were great, okay? Check this out, laser gun, you had a lot of fun. Here you go, only cost five dollars, hit the road. <laughs> what? What, boo? You can give him the money too? You can't really put a price on what we do, you know? And it's hard, too. That's why we try to explain, well, this is what we think the show's worth, but each person gets something totally individual out of it. And if we can make somebody's day, um, you know, that's great for us. And the fact that people really support what we do, you know, it makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> I like busking festivals uh, because they're interesting a way of doing theater on the streets. I like hardcore busking more than I do festivals sometimes because I can really develop my own art. I don't have people telling me what to do. My father worked in a factory for 35 years. He died when he was 61 years of age of over smoking. I bet you if he could, he would have changed that job. People work in jobs they hate all the time. I'm doing what I love, that's really important. It sounds corny as hell, and I'm sure a lot of people say, give me a break, but it's true. If you do what you love, all the other things are unimportant. Here comes the fun part. I have that chance to That's a few hours of work. Here it's a business. It's a vocation. Over in Europe, it's a lifestyle, philosophy, a way of life. The whole idea is to neutralize the face, to neutralize the outer, and people see inside, because what they're attracted to is the spirit inside. This is what theater was meant to be, to, for the masses, and I think we're fulfilling a very important goal. It's the soul that gets the crowd. That's what a great actor is all about. Tell me, does this, is this how Olivier started? years, I don't think I'm going to be street performing and passing my hat for money. Um, I said that five years ago. In five years I wouldn't be, but here I am. Listen folks, um, this is going to be a live show. I'm actually here right now. If you're having fun in any way, clapping is positive feedback. Silence means you're bored, stiff, and you're about to leave. I love the challenge. It was so difficult and every time I did a show I got a little better. I just kept doing it over and over. Every chance I got, I got on stage, did, did whatever I could. Five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm actually pretty good. Someone told me right in the beginning, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Street performing is all about uh, relationship with your audience. Five ball juggle, this is five. That's more than four. It's a significant amount of balls. There it is. It's a beautiful trick. Hang on, hang on. Let me do let me do some tricks. This is the basic trick. You want to see some variations? Yeah! There's one foot. <laughs> Lefty. No feet. There it is. And now, a trick for the people behind me that can't see. This is called the five ball two foot shuffle. <laughs> all the way around. Look at all the people. All the way around without messing up once. Hey! It's a great place to learn how to perform. Uh, it's a great place to, to try new material. Um, it's possible to, to make a living street performing. There's a lot of kids here. I've only got one club. If I just pick some cute little kid, all the ugly kids are gonna get upset and I look like the bad guy. I want this to be fair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the club in the center and I'm gonna count to three. <laughs> Nick, come here. 
He got the club, huh? Yeah. Where are you from? Pickering. Pickering. All the way from Pickering. <laughs> Nick came from Pickering. He saw the club, he came out, and he took it. <laughs> I guess Nick's playing street rules. All right, Nick, you got the club. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go this time. You get to hold the club. Can I shake your hand? Thanks for coming up here, Nick. You can go right over there. Nick, you got the club this time. But kids, that's a lesson to you. <laughs> if you wait and you play by the rules, you get nothing. My goal in life was to, to be my own boss and to, to be self-sufficient and not need a job. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Woe was right, <laughs> except it was four different letters. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh. I love not having a boss. I love being able to work when I want. I love being able to make as much money as I want. And there are very few jobs in the world that allow you to work harder to make more money. And street performing is one of them. Okay. okay. All right. Now that I am safely balanced, I will juggle the clubs. You guys with the juggling clubs, I need you with the clubs to come up to the middle with the clubs. Okay, Nick, this is where you're going to come in. Can you see the empty space I've made in the juggling pattern? Nick, all you have to do... <laughs> Nick! Nick! Listen, I was about to get to the instructions. All you have to do, Nick, is identify the space. It seems you've done that. You're looking at it. Now just time your throw so it does one and a half rotations and make it land right about there. From Pickering! Nick, that was such a good throw, it ruined about five minutes of jokes. You, you could have missed a couple times. I love the fact that I can walk out onto a street corner and, and stop 200, 300, 400 random people who had no intention of watching a show, entertain them for, you know, 30 to 45, 50 minutes, and make them all laugh for that time and then convince them to pay you money. If you don't have any money, thank you for watching. You can come up and say thank you, that means a lot. If you do have money, I would like some of it. Here's the trick. All right, I'm gonna stand on one foot and juggle. Here we go. Can we just get ready? Okay. Am I on one foot yet? Okay, now I just have to juggle. biggest compliment I ever get is when I, I do my show and someone walks up to me after the show and it happens once a week at least and just says, I was having a horrible day at work, uh, everything went wrong today, I was in a, a horrible mood and I walked by and I caught your show and I stayed and laughed for half an hour and you made me smile. <laughs> Before I attempt this, how many folks have actually seen somebody smash a piece of wood against their head? Clap if you've seen that. You've seen that? All right, then I'm not going to do it. I want to make this show special. Why? Because I love you people. So I'm not going to do something you've seen before. I used to do Broadway intermissions. People would come out for five minutes to have a smoke or to have a rest from the play and I would do a, literally a five minute show and then collect money and then they'd go back in.
I'm kind of teasing the crowd. Um, I, I'm doing, I counted it up, I'm, I'm promising six stunts and I'm doing three of them. So for me, it's more about the buildup of the, of the stunt than the stunt itself. When I first began, it was like, how hard is this trick? How hard is this trick? And now it's more about how hard the audience thinks the trick is. Jesus. Come on, clap people. Come on, louder. Come on, clap, man. Clap, lady. I was in Vietnam, man, clap. All right. All right. All right. Oh, shit. All right. I can tell some of you folks are still not impressed. Checking out my first move. The key to busking is you have a lot of freedom. You can travel, go to any country you want, travel all over the world, make money, make people laugh, and that's already doing what you love is a great thing. Knife between my legs. My brother tried this, now he's my sister. Here we go, people. Check it out. Knife between the legs on the shaky prop case. Here we go. Jesus. That's it. Ah, uh, come on. I have scars from juggling, you know. I have, I have this one from catching an axe the wrong way, so you, you do have accidents, but you know, they're, they're very rare. I know I'm kind of like a role model for a lot of you children out there watching. If you stay in school, stay off the drugs, you could become just like me. Chinese. Here we go. Jesus. Yeah! I need one man on the audience. We need a kind of drug-taking kind of college student. You want to pick the volunteer. If he's smiling or she's smiling and having a good time, then generally on stage they'll be okay. I will attempt to chop through this cucumber right on top of this dude's stomach. <laughs> if this works, a big round of applause, right? Man, that's almost the same color, man. That makes it harder. Here we go. All right, here we go. On three, people. One. Two, and this is nearly impossible, but I can do it, because I'm... Finally, all right. Trust me, James, I've been doing this over 10 years, and I know exactly what I'm doing, man. Here we go. Shit. All right, on three, James, here we go. Don't worry, man, I know exactly what I'm, oh, shit. What I'm doing. Here we go. One, two. Hold on, man. I just gotta see where it's at. <laughs> I hope this is a cucumber. I think I have a couple more years. I mean, until I become long in the tooth, but I want to start doing more theater stuff, more acting, and uh, doing different roles. Everybody I've been doing it since I was a kid, so I've had a long and a good run. Here we go. Everybody, like this. Come on, people. Clap. Come on, louder, people. Come on, everybody! All at once! Here we go. One. Don't move, man. You can do it. Two and three. Yeah! Damn, I'm good. Stand up there, buddy. Folks, everyone, give this man a round of applause. Come on back here, sir. Success is when externally you're getting what you need and internally you're satisfying yourself. For me, it's it really comes back to doing what I love to do and people enjoying that. I'm not gonna patronize you folks, but oh Canada, <laughs> our home and native land. Do what you love to do, just go for it, but uh, it's also a young man's sport. It's, it's a very physically demanding job, yeah, but definitely go for it if you want to do it and right know that you get better at it. All right, I guess that's all the money I can get out of this, I mean, uh, most fun I can get out of this. I'm Master Lee, good night. <laughs>
last year when I went to Edmonton, I uh, I had that ladder made, had a custom design, like, like I designed it and then had it custom made. Whereas before, when I was on the ground, like three rows of people could have a clear view of what I was doing. On the top of the ladder, 15 rows of people could see it, 30 rows of people could see it. You can see it from 100 meters away. This is only my second festival for the year. I took two years off and I was a missionary in Utah. And so I'm just getting back into the circuit now. You do a few shows and if it's too rigid, you realize it's too rigid, so you make it more loose. If it's too unstructured, you realize it's too unstructured, so you make it more rigid. It's just a fine balance that you find after you perform a while. Every show is different. That's the fun of ski performing. It's uh, refreshing. You improvise, there's coincidence, so that um, as a performer, you don't get bored of your own show. Ready and one. Everybody? Three, Everyone? Four, five, six. Honey and White, I dropped it, they didn't notice. Thank you. Just go back there a little bit and uh, throw it to me. Not yet, not yet, <laughs> when I say go. No, underhand, okay, honey? Okay, hold it like this. And just nice and long, okay, point out. Good, very nice. We'll just see how many times she'll do it. <laughs> I just, I, just, I just like when you bend over. <laughs> Thanks, love. And if you can just come stand over here for a sec. They're really, really advanced street performers. They really don't do much in their show, but they're good with the crowd. <laughs> by making what you do um, amazing, yeah, by making it out for what it is, then, uh, then you do really, really well. I usually do the last step without juggling, but since you're such a great crowd and sticking it out for me, I'm going to stick it out for you. We're going to get up to the 13th step on one foot juggling. Now, I think I'm dying of heat exhaustion, that must be what it is. If you guys don't mind, I'm just going to get rid of this shirt of mine. I like it when the middle-aged women are laughing in such a way that lets me know for sure that they have a crush on me. I really like that. That's when I flex my muscles. Yeah, that's when I flex my muscles. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All the way to the top. Everybody, take your hands out of your pockets, wherever else they might be. Take them out like this, put your hands up. When I clap my knives together, everyone clap your hands together just once. Here we go. Okay, together, let's try again. Perfect. Let's hope this works, my friends. Did I feel like I succeeded in a word? Yeah. It means I've done my job. This is what I do for a living, nothing else. Think of it like this, my friends. It's my job to risk my life to make you laugh, cheer, and smile. Have I done my job? Woo! The higher you get, the more scary. Like, people can relate to the fear of being high in the air. Like, people look up there, they see that I'm just balanced on a four-inch piece of metal, and they can tell that it's scary. Yeah, when I flip off it, they can relate to, like, holy crap, I would never do that. So there's a little bit of fear, but also just because people can see it, they're more apt to uh, respond generously. You probably think to yourself, about 20 bucks. Now let's do this trick before I pass out and just fall off the ladder. How's that sound? Thank you, Anna. You guys have been really, 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 really fantastic. Thank you. Here we go. my limitations dude and I didn't respect my limitations there man like almost died I thought I was gonna pass out man yeah, yeah for that matter I thought you weren't gonna do the jump oh yeah yeah no I almost like I almost like fell off my ladder twice up there yeah. like that was uncool yeah, but uh it was cool the audience was cool the audience was supportive and so I got re-energized and that was good thanks thank you Otto. you guys were when an audience sticks around for a show like that it's something special you know like and so people came to the festival to support it and uh and that's really great It was really
really hard in the beginning. I didn't know where to go. I, you know, I didn't have gigs. I went to a farmer's market in my hometown of Ithaca, New York, and I started there performing in front of people. And it built because I, I started to get to know other performers who were further along like than me, and this. I looked up to them, and I sort of was coached in that way. No, 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 gets better, watch. That was perfect. <laughs> watch, down my arm, on my head. Okay, down the arm, off the arm, on the head, down the arm, up the arm, on the head, down the back, onto my foot. That was good. Switch feet to the same foot. And now I'm gonna try and kick it up in there and catch it on top of my head. Huh. Oh. Don't clap, that's not what I had in mind. Although that was good. Yes! If a street is empty, you, you feel that much better if you have a big crowd at the end. So there's a big payoff. There could be good frustration in the beginning, but you always want to sort of do it anyway. No, it's pure skill, skill and inertia. Look at that, perfectly. <laughs> I'll get it. Wow, I'm lucky. <laughs> it's hard to have a street show copywritten, and material just gets around the globe really fast. If you've created anything that you feel is unique to you, it's hard on the street to, to keep it still unique. But I really enjoy this as a sort of, it's, it's a school, it, it gets me better, it's fulfilling. There we go. Yeah. That's the rhythm of it. Oh, oh, oh spare me the sound effects. In a, in a street show, half of it is audience. Huh. There. Yo, yeah. that's good. Huh. Oh. Just one more. Shut up. This is the first time where I'll be going a um, full year with doing nothing but the show. In the past two winters, I've worked in schools with a different show. Hopefully, I'll spend the winter tackling you know, new skills that I want to do, new promotional materials, so I can get the business side on its way. OK. Yeah. Ooh, did you see that? I just got the last box. Should be easy. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Boy, that looks familiar. Okay, just that. Uh, that. The feeling of having accomplished something. If there's a day where I expect to perform and it turns out that it rains or something happens, maybe I'm not emotionally up to it and I don't do a show, I'm left wanting to do something. And you know what? I'm not gonna bore you with the money line. So it's up to you. I want five bucks. Each.
And I'm a busker! I saw uh, Waterloo Busking Fest about seven or eight years ago, and, and up till then I didn't even realize that the uh, festivals existed. So at that point, I um, I started working on polishing a, a full show. I just approached some festivals and and uh, sold the show. It's probably better I don't have you for the fire part of the show, huh? Here we go, everybody, on the count of three, we all clap. He jumps, he skips his rope, blindfold. One, two, three, jump! Wait, it's okay, man, it wasn't your fault. My timing was off. I have it now, it'll work, I promise. Are you ready? All right, everybody ready? On the count of three. As long as we keep clapping, you keep jumping. It's gonna go, this is gonna be awesome. One, two, three, jump, 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 keep going, keep going, jump. You know, I have a lot of fun. I, it's almost hard to call it a show because it, it is fun. I'm playing. I have fun with the people, but the, the build is skipping with the, one of the audience members. And I don't even really skip. They just, you know, we get them clapping, get them jumping, and it gets the people wound up. And because of my energy, I think they feed back. They have more energy, and that feeds on me as well. So we keep it rolling, and the energy just sort of feeds each other. My show is a lot of fun. Is he back? Here we go, everybody. Yeah! Is that it? I'm all over. Yeah! Here we go, one torch under my leg. The build is so important because you got people going by and you, and you have to grab attention, have them stop it and want to watch the show. The show also has to keep things moving, otherwise they'll just walk, you know? Um, and, and the volunteers and the interaction is, is so important. It, it brings the audience in. They're not watching the show anymore. They're, they're part of this. Thank you, what's your name? Allie. Allie. Now Allie, normally I get someone who's already kissed me to do this part of the show with me, okay? So Allie. If you could just give me a little kiss. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> Do it again. Now, Allie, I have two jobs for you. The first one is, if I catch fire at any time during the show, it's your job, Allie, to put me out, okay? I've had minor burns, but in the beginning, it was, it was just minor stuff about Seven years into it, I had a serious burn. My face was on fire. Actually, I was rehearsing uh, something that I was working on, a bigger fireball finale, um, trying to make it bigger, last longer, um, trying new fuels. And as I was performing, I was looking up at the fireball burning, running right back to my face. And when it hit my face, the ball went out, thankfully, but my face kept burning. Whole trick, whole trick. Yeah! I don't know, I'd been doing it a while, I got a little bit cocky and uh, and I got burned. I just had to pull my shirt up to actually pat myself out. My name's Truly Odd. 
You guys, you've been truly incredible. I'm not crazy. something today that's never been attempted on the streets of Ottawa before. We are going to try the butt transfer. At one point we jumped right into it, jumped into the Bioward Market in Ottawa and started to do, we just basically juggled behind a hat, but we really hadn't seen a whole lot of acts at that point. Then we started to see other acts, saw how it worked and kind of formed a show, just seeing, hey, okay, people do, do gather a crowd, do a show. Now, in order for a butt transfer to happen, one of you needs to light my bum on fire, and the other you needs to pat my bum out. <laughs> you will light. <laughs> and look at that, you've already got a mitt on to pat my bum out. We worked on our act for a couple of years in Ottawa at night, sort of with the, with the bar crowd and worked that out there. And then finally we, we got to the festivals and festivals have been great. And once you're here, the usually the money's pretty good. So going back to just straight street can be kind of tough. All right, what I'm going to do is I've got a fuel soaked torch right here. I'm going to tap his butt. You're going to tap the torch exactly where I tapped his butt. Lighting it on fire. On fire. Brian's going to light the other torch off of my bum. And that's your cue to, to come in to and tap. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We got a video together and a PR kit and started working on the business side of the show business. And uh, gradually over the years, we'd start with one festival, then next festival, then word of mouth, other festivals would hear about us. Here we go. Right there, right there. Go for it. Go, okay. Pat him out, pat him out. Yes! yes! <laughs> the, the butt transfer. Eat it, eat it. Wait, hold on. Fire eating is no laughing matter. It's very, very serious. Years of dedication. Kids, I am a trained professional. Whatever you do, do not try this at home. Go to a neighbor's house. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let, let's get that chant going again. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. I personally enjoy two things. One, making people laugh, having, making people have a good time, and two, getting people outdoors, away from their computers, away from the small screen, away from the, the TV, the, the movies, the internet, and getting out into a community theater atmosphere. Now would be a good time to clap. You're good on the street. You're great in festivals. That's what it comes down to. Because the street's so lively. It's you've got you've got kind of an edge if you're working just raw street. You really have to be on your toes. Ready for anything to happen. Festival circuit's a little more safe. You don't get so many hecklers. Okay, that's enough. You don't need to pump it up anymore. <laughs> The best way to learn about it is to get out there and do it a lot. I mean, we've probably done probably around 1,500 shows, and every show, after every show, take notes, look at what worked, what didn't work, keep working on the show, go with what works and what feels good, and do what you want to do. All right, here we go, hands. Hands in the coffee business. You ready, Dylan? Go for it, Dylan! Yes! That's him for Dylan! very aware that we're not going to be able to do this for the next like 10 or 15 years. Just physically, it's so much physical work. Uh, so we might actually go down and bring it down to just a comedy show. But I mean, doing shows is great and it's, you know, I love doing it. So I'll probably always be doing shows in some fashion. Hold on, I miss. No, Hold on, Ralph. Oh man! Oh. Your, your feet really stink! Oh, oh. oh you're one to talk and smell at this end too! <laughs> Most performers will tell you why they do this. They do this to raise money for their sick grandmother who, who needs an operation. Some other performers will tell you that they're students and they're doing this to raise money to go to university. We're going to be completely honest in telling you why we do this. We do this to raise money for a sick grandmother who wants to go to university. One, two, three! Go wild! Yes! Under the leg. Yes! Yes! Thank you.
Next one. You can react. Dump it all together. There's a better shot. Ooh. Two hats. Two hats are better than one. Two hats are better than one sometimes. Yeah, but you have to split it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it in a very jaded part of town uh, across from, you know, the theater where, you know, th things like, you know, the latest Andrew Lloyd Webber show would be playing. So um, I would have people coming out and stand 60 feet away from me in their $2,000 suits uh, with their arms crossed with their trophy wives uh, standing there challenging me to impress them. And after eating fire and escaping from a straitjacket, they would be throwing me a quarter and thinking that they're doing me a huge favor. Blaine, take the first padlock. You're going to lock the chains together around my wrist. You're going to go through the bottom link all the way through to the other side. Snap it shut. Brilliant. OK, you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side, all the way through to the other side of the wrist. It's a tight fit. It's supposed to be. Excellent. Good. Now I'm now locked into the solid stainless steel chain link handcuffs. You guys are so cool. It was only just 10 years ago that I started uh, busking at festivals. I'd done some street performing beforehand, um, just freestyle, um, just uh, fighting for attention on the street for money. And uh, since then now I only busk at, you know, organized events and festivals. All right, is it good? Okay, bring it over here so that I'm right in the middle. Hold it flat like a tablecloth, just touching my fingertips. Now what I need you to do is to put your hands together to make a bag around my hands. Perfect, okay, open it up. Once you go to one or two festivals, you meet other performers who give you other names, and it just snowballs until you build a list of festivals, and other acts will tell you which festivals are good and which ones are not good. Go, hands go in, fold it up. Now what I need you two to do is to don't look at me, but look around the audience, study their reactions, because it's very important to get good audience reactions for this trick to work, all right? Excellent, okay, stop the watch for a sec. Guys, open the cloth, open the cloth. Sir, I want you to check these out. Make sure they're solid, give them a pull. Ma'am, you two, just give it a pull, check it out. Is it good? Yeah. Okay, not that hard, man, I'm a little guy. Doug Henning quoted a source, and I don't know who the original source is, uh, but for magic, the job is to make the difficult look easy and the easy look beautiful. What you see in a show is the end result. You don't see the months and the years of the sweat and sometimes even the blood that goes into a routine. Okay, hands go in there. Okay, now Birgit, you've got a lot of people here behind you, so make sure that they can see. It's very, very important everybody can see this, all right? Very important. Stop the watch for a sec, guys. Open the cloth. Open the cloth, ma'am. I need you to check these out. Just give them a pull. Check them out. Is it good? Brilliant. Okay, look, I'm so sorry. This is very embarrassing. I'm supposed to go to both sides of the audience. I forgot, I got a little excited. If the audience likes you as a person, it doesn't matter what you do. Here's what we're gonna do, I'm gonna count to three. When I do that, I want you to give my friends up here a big round of applause. I'm gonna get my keys. Show me the keys. All right, and then we're gonna light the fire. All right, one, two, three, big round of applause. If you have that crowd won over personality-wise, it's very, very hard to screw up. Personality goes a long way toward a successful show. So making the people care about you and then genuinely caring about them too, yeah, it goes, makes a huge difference between having a bad show and a great show. When you hear a loud snap, you'll know that they're done. Oh man, is that ever hot. Okay, you're gonna take the first padlock, Jeff. You're gonna lock the chain to itself. Let the chain run through your hand at about uh, chest height, and I'm gonna walk away, let me walk away. I'm gonna walk towards you and turn at the same time. I want you to let the chain wrap around my body as high as my shoulders and as low as my hips. All right, let me just... Uh... I have managed for the last several years to do what I love doing and get paid for it. Um, there's always a higher place to go. I think if I were to say that I was truly successful, then that would leave me no place to climb. All right, are you ready to see the escape? Are you ready to see me get beaten? You sick people. All right, hit play, pick up the stick, wait for the music, let's go. 
Help her out. Give her some encouragement. Oh, come on, Cindy, you hit like a girl. I've come home late. I've been drinking. Getting them to scream and to yell and getting them to react like a rock concert audience is, uh, is definitely my high, and that for sure gets me on. Ow! Ah, ow! Certainly I enjoy the travel, so I'd like to do a lot more of that, going to other countries and taking what I do out to different uh, places and showing it off. That's what I've always wanted to do. Kids, don't try this at home, all right? Because uh, you'll get a better audience at school. I finished my first year of university and I decided that I didn't really want to get a, a real job. So uh, I just went out on the street and, and learned how to busk and I was, I was really, really, really horrible when I started but uh, I guess I learned a little bit about it. Just by chance I, I landed a, a big festival in the, in the Yukon in Whitehorse and they flew me up to, the, to Whitehorse and uh, they put me up in a hotel and I I only had to do a couple shows a day, came back with a pile of money, and I just had such a blast. I've been working hard at it, and um, I'm starting to get some more bigger festivals, like I'm hoping to do Singapore. Um, I, I might be doing Halifax next summer, and, uh, and I've been on the, the Late Show with David Letterman, so all that's really exciting, so. Also do some balancing, some balancing tricks. My new finale is balancing a, a lawnmower on my face and chopping lettuce with it. Total control over the audience, that's just just one of the best feelings you can have. I studied dance for two years and then I went to circus school for three years and I met this clown here there and we both like doing acrobalance so we hooked up and started practicing and put a few shows together and put a busking show together and here we are. Hey? No, 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 that's not it. Let's save it up. It gets more obvious. There you go. Come on. Yeah. Thank you. Check these guys out. They're awesome. We both wanted to travel for the summer, and we bought a van and said, OK, we're going to put a show together so that we can travel and make money as we go. I really wanted to be an acrobat before I got too old to become an acrobat and live a life full of regrets about not being an acrobat. And um, we went to circus school in New Zealand. I met Daisy there and um, we hooked up and learnt partner acrobatics ever since.
Ours is a little different. We have more skills involved. It's not so much blah, blah, blah. I mean, we have some blah, blah with comedy and that, but we prefer to do more skills, let the audience see what we can do, as opposed to building every single trick up. Don't clap yet, it gets better. Yeah, for you. You go, girl, I love you. Don't clap yet, it has a romantic finish. This is the pinnacle of street performing, working at these festivals. And, you know, it's as far away from working at raw street corners as you can possibly get. And um, after, after this, um, when I get bored of working festivals, I'll start doing cabaret stuff somewhere. <laughs> It's um, not about what you do or even the way you do it, it's about how you sell yourself. And the only way you sell yourself is by having a good video, good website, good promo, good business sense. That's what it is, it's all about that now and you've got to spend money. Oh, that's a cheering moment. Thank you. If you really want to be performing, you just have to put yourself out there and believe in yourself, believe that you're good enough to do it. And there's a place for every level, which is really cool. <laughs> when you've really got your audience right in the palm of your hand, they notice every little thing. But when you're working to a big crowd and they're really loving you, then they're seeing all the little nuances of your character, which normally only you notice. What are you looking at, sir? People say that by the time you're 27 to 29 or 30, you should be uh, making real inroads into what you want to do in your life and be well on your way. And I'm, I'm well on my way to what I want to be doing with my life. And I'm in the right age, so I'm on par with a lawyer, but I work less hours. Yeah. I'm sure you'll all agree. The bad trick was worth a tenner. Each. Here we go. Good luck, guys. know this at all, but Ottawa has one of the better busking festivals in the world. And that's no word of a lie. Just kept trying out in the street, and then lo and behold, I put some skateboarding in, and the show got more fun, and now I'm skateboarding and doing fire shows. I call it the wheelie hot show. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to see me eat fire now? Okay, you're killing me. So I'm going to have to show you the really gross trick then, I guess. I was more um, rock and roll, sort of, uh, you know, uh, sideshow type show that I was doing back then. Maybe I was angrier when I was younger, I don't know. And so I'd do this thing where I hammered a nail on my nose, and then uh, some balloon guy said, hey man, you could um, put that balloon and it can come out your mouth. And I was like, really, eh? Oh. Oh, man. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh! Freaks people out, and I find it really loosens up the crowd. Like, if crowd sometimes can be uptight a bit, and I find that'll, like, pff, totally loosen them up. Yeah! And now we're gonna get this lady to pull it out of my nose! <laughs> and I try to make eye contact before and find, like, someone who, like, just I don't know, sense would be good, who's like open, who's funny, or give a good reaction. Ultimately, the best thing is when the person freaks out. That's what you want, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because everyone gets to relieve tension through that. Here we go, just nice, nice and slow. Uh oh, oh yeah, oh! And you can keep that as a souvenir! I love it, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with fire or skateboarding. I'm dying to cut it out of the show, to be honest. Like, if I have to be, like, 
It's a pretty disgusting way to like. Oh, now here's the really hard part. The really hard part is going like this. Oh yeah! Do you want to see me eat fire now? When I go, hey, you want to see me eat fire? And they all go, yeah, and it really is nice. That's, uh, ultimately, that's the best moment because it's like, whew, you're using this torch, it's almost like a magician's wand. It's great and people are responding. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to see me eat fire? I remember as a kid seeing the Cirque du Soleil starting on the street. It blew my mind away what they brought their show to. So maybe I'll be lucky enough with enough diligent hard work, I can get to Vegas or I can get to these big festivals. I know you can tell your friends and family when you see me on TV and stuff, you can say, hey man, I gave that guy 20 bucks for his dream. And I believe in dreamers. Yeah, baby! I'm a skateboarder and the kids all want you, do this, do that, or I say, you wanna eat fire? Kid goes, do it already, they just, some kid wants to be the star, you know what I mean? And he's just yelling, and then you're a street performer, you're that accessible, you know what I mean? So it's not like you have the illusion of the theater even to quiet down some kids. You have to create your own theater. Okay, I'll tell you your future. Give me your shoe. Give me your shoe. Okay, I'm gonna tell you your future right now. I see you going on a long walk. Hopefully, I like to think that I have like enough of like, you know, got enough original stuff in there, like, hey, that shoe bit, I didn't make that up. But it's like something you do with a kid if a kid gets too outrageous, because a kid like that can ruin a show. Ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is make some noise! <laughs> Let's go! The road! That was definitely not enough noise for the size of this crowd! Make some real noise! <laughs> Let's make some noise one more time! Yeah! It's good to have a, uh, something at the end of the show that just people go, wow, you know what? That was worth it, man. That was pretty good. So, yeah. So, it's, uh, you'll see every performer has a finale, usually, except the statue or musicians. <laughs> Go, go! Yeah! Thank you, Ottawa, for being the best crowds in Canada, man. Wait, 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 I gotta go all the way around.